Welcome to the weekly question and answers from my Instagram. The first question is, what are your thoughts about Rottweilers? Good breed for family and protection? Rottweiler is a great dog if you can get a good one. Uh, my thoughts are if you can find a good one, meaning like somebody who's trained them, a breeder who's actively training the dogs, you get to meet the dogs and you see that they're very stable and clear headed, great with the family, natural protective instinct is fine. Uh, if you can find something like that, I think they're a great dog. Um, but a lot of things are all over the place with Rottweilers. Uh, this Rottweiler grumble has become prevalent. Uh, I see a lot of Rottweiler aggression nowadays toward their handlers. Um, I don't mind aggression toward strangers. I don't like aggression toward the family. Uh, that's something that's genetic. Yes, you can train it out, but I don't think that's something that needs to be trained. I think that should be genetic. So that's my opinion on that. When Jones connected with that spinning back kick, how crazy did your mom go? My mom's a big fight fan. Um, she wanted to watch a fight. She always weasels me over there to watch a fight. And then uh, I end up getting fed and screw up my diet. My mom, generally the main events are at like midnight. And <laughs> John Jones' fight wasn't until one. So when the fight started, my mom was knocked out on the couch. Um, so that's how... My mom reacted to the John Jones fight. It was actually hilarious. She was waiting for all the other fights, and then she fell asleep before the John Jones. It is what it is, man. So in other words, she got knocked out before the fight started. It's never happened. She's never fell asleep during a fight. That's a first. But it's all good. How did you get started in training protection dogs? So my dog was super friendly, and as a puppy, he loved everybody every person he was super friendly with. And because I was a barber at the time, he knew every client, he would see everybody. So he was so used to people, he was just super friendly to see anybody. And uh, when he was about five, six months old, I had him on a downstay in front of the house. I was cleaning the house and I had him on a downstay outside. I was inside and I was looking at him through the window. Um, window was open so I could yell at him, but I was watching him and he was on a downstay in the yard. And I saw somebody whistling, well, I heard the whistling, and I was like, what's that? And I seen him wagging his tail looking at a guy off in the distance. So I stuck my head, up, my head out there, and I saw some guy in the distance kind of calling him. And that's when I decided, you know what? I came, I came outside, dude took off, and I said, you know what? I'm gonna train this dog to be a little, a little uh, aggressive looking because he's too friendly, and everybody that knows him knows that he's super friendly. So I kind of wanted people to kind of think, okay, you know, this guy might have a side to him. So then I started to take him to train to see if he could do a bark and hold and, and uh, stuff like that. But I did do prior training before, but it was never with, it was never for protection work. Um, it was never, it was something I always wanted to do, but never, because I had pit bulls, I never wanted them to be like that. So I never did protection work with them. Um, and then it started as a bark and hold and evolved into competing in PSA and French ring. And uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it thoroughly, and that's what started the journey. How is Freddie progressing? Freddie's actually right next to me, actually. He's progressing actually really good. He was super scared of a lot of things. Um, with a dog like this, you want to bond with them first. You want to make sure that you build a bond, have fun, let them get into their comfort zone, and then start acting a fool if they do. And he's been a really nice dog. He did go after one of my shepherds to fight. Um, but the dog that I had out with him, um, is not aggressive and kind of was like, bro, what are you doing? You know, like dad will kill you. And, um, I needed to see that. Um, I didn't have him around any of my super, uh, dominant dogs because he would get killed. Um, so that's not something that I, I, I have him around. I, that's not something I even knew that he had a little side of dominance and aggression. Um, it's not bad. It's just normal dog shit. He's a dominant dog somewhat, I think. Uh, he carries himself somewhat dominant when it comes to other dogs, but he's, he's a scaredy cat in general. Um, so he's coming along well. I can grab him, shake him around, bang things around him, and he's pretty neutral now. Um, his, his overall obedience is coming together. Um, he went to a couple department stores with me. He's been totally fine. Um, he is a little anxious. So a lot of thresholds I am working with him because he likes to get excited and he's a very sweet dog. He's actually not a bad dog at all. Um, he just got some issues and they could be from, you know, he was rescued from a, uh, a place where I'm not sure if he was abused, but 
looks like an abusive situation and his mom really cares for him and um, he's coming around to be a really good dog. He's really nice, really sweet boy. What traits do you look for in choosing a puppy? Generally, I like a very confident dog. So what I would look for is a dog who's kind of dominating his brothers and sisters, but he's not overbearing. Like he's not growling and snarling and he's just like kind of relaxed. But you could see that he is a fairly dominant dog in the litter. I want to see a dog that's confident. Um, you know, he walks around, he's not scared of things. Um, if he hears a bang, maybe he'll back up a little bit, but then he'll go check it out. He's got good recovery. Um, if I flip him upside down or I, I hold him a certain way, he's not really squirrely, he's just kind of relaxed. Um, that's what I look for. Now, within different breeds, you are gonna have different variation of this. If I take one of my pit bulls and I flip them upside down, they're fine. Generally, you take a shepherd like that, they'll be uncomfortable in the beginning. So it's more of a training element with a shepherd, in my opinion, than say one of my dogs. But that's what I look for overall. Now training, if you got a good genetics, training could supersede a lot of these things. Um, a decent dog with decent genetics can still be a great dog. Um, a great dog with great genetics, with great training is going to be a great dog. A great dog with crappy training is going to be a mediocre dog. So breeding uh, genetics count, but picking your puppy if it's from a good line generally is safe. Once the dog comes from a good line, generally, unless it's like a, for some reason that that puppy is very scared, um, it's generally okay. All the puppies are generally across the board good. Freddie update, please, we miss him. He's good, man. He had two chicken carcasses today. He's looking at me right now. He's learning to be calm by himself. He used to cry when he sees me by myself or with another dog. Now he's kind of relaxing. This is what I need to see, um, but he's good. He's good. We're gonna step up the game. As I see that the dog evolves, I adapt to that ev evolution and I add more pressure or whatever you'd want to call it to see how he reacts and just build his tolerance. It's kind of like boot camp. The end outcome is I want the dog to be super confident, right? I want him to learn that he is more confident than he thinks he is. I got to teach him that he has nothing to worry about. He has to be safe. Accidents cannot happen when you're trying to build a dog, uh, build a dog's confidence. Once they trust you, you need to lead them and make sure that nothing happens to them. Now, generally, I don't use an e-collar, but there's a couple things that I actually need to use the e-collar for for Freddy. Because he does some things remotely away from me that I need to stop, and the timing needs to be good, and I need it to not come from me. Um, so that's why he's wearing an e-collar, if you're noticing that he's got the green thing on him. But I'm getting him used to whatever he's scared of, and I'm knocking out the other issues that are remotely away from me. But he's coming along well. How many days per week do you work out or train? I would like to do kickboxing or some sort of cardio in the morning and weightlifting or something at night. That's what I would like to do in an optimal environment, but there's nothing optimal right now. What does your everyday diet consist of? Do you track macros? If I'm trying to get to eight pack status, then yes, I definitely need to track my macros. Uh, I could be at a shadow six pack and eat fairly clean. Uh, but once I start borderline going into six to eight pack, eight pack is very difficult, six pack, I definitely need to track my macros. What do I eat? Um, optimally, I like red meat. So I like a lot of beef. I eat a lot of chicken and tuna um, is my meals. Brown rice, white rice, uh, sweet potatoes, veggies, uh, berries for morning, eggs, a lot of eggs. Um, and yes, every meal is kind of somewhat calculated. Generally, I'll have like five, six eggs with berries in the morning would be my breakfast. And lunch and dinner would probably be rice and steak or rice and chicken. It's kind of what I do. For a dog to bite for real, 
do it need to be aggressive or obedient towards the handler or just love the act? Training the dog and the genetics that you have in front of you will dictate this. The dog does not need to be, the dog does not need to be aggressive or have civil aggression to bite for real. Um, and a relationship with the handler is always good. It's never gonna be a bad thing that the, the relationship with the handler, like the dog doesn't have to be aggressive to the handler to bite for real. That has nothing to do with it. Biting can be an obedience exercise. I'm telling you to bite. You like the person, I told you to bite. So you gotta bite. So biting for real is, you don't need aggression. You don't need any of that. The dog will bite for real. Now, a dog that loves to bite and has natural civil aggression and aggressive tendencies is a problem if you're not an expert handler, okay? What do I need to know about owning a Dutch Shepherd? The genetics of the dog will dictate a lot about the dog in front of you. But if we had to generalize a Dutch Shepherd, um, they're super loving dogs. Uh, a lot of people say they're crazy. Word on the street is they're spun. They got like loose marbles. Uh, that's not the truth. Even the ones that I've seen, that I've owned, that have said that have loose marbles, that's not really the case. A lot of them do carry a little more civil aggressive nature, which means like they're more willing to bite a person. Um, and they definitely have a lot of prey drive generally. Uh, but these are just general statements. This doesn't mean across the board. I find them to be very loving, just like the Malinois. Um, I find them to be very loving. They are going to be a little more active. They will bark more than a normal dog, but they're actually like super nice dogs. The most important thing about buying any dog is going to the right breeder that has training experience, that understands the dog, and you can trust their judgment. This is the biggest thing. If you go to a shitty breeder that says, Oh yeah, my dog's like this and my dog's like that. They don't really have experience. You got problems on your hand, right? You want a dog that you know what the parents are like. Depending on your lifestyle and your life situation is dictates the type of dog you want. For instance, I've got people that have my duchies that are family people with kids and I've had zero complaints. Okay, so it's not like they're wild, but before the family takes them home, I do tell them, this is a dog that will bite a stranger for coming in your house. The dog doesn't know it's your grandma. The dog doesn't know it's your grandpa. Uh, so don't expect that. If the dog doesn't know the person all the time, then expect that the dog might react. How do I break my pit from being bone aggressive? He is a different dog when he has a bone. This is generally not a pit bull trait. If he's showing you aggression, that to me is not a trait of a pit bull. Um, so this sounds like the dog's got some American bully or something in it. If the dog is showing protective nature over a bone with you, that's called resource guarding. It's called resource guarding regardless, even if it's from another dog, but, but it's natural for them to resource guard against other dogs. It's not natural for them to be resource guarding against humans. That's not a trait of a pit bull in my opinion. Depends on the resource guarding and how hardcore the dog is on the resource guarding, then I can make an assessment on what the right steps are to fix that. But I wouldn't be able to tell you that over the uh, this conversation here. Thank you guys for joining in on question and answers. I hope everything's good with everybody at home. I hope I've answered some of your questions. And once again, don't be a piece of shit. We're living in a world that looks like it's starting to smoothen out. A lot of things are, are, are like in limbo. Putin's about to possibly go to war. Biden's doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, the world is a little crazy right now. Hopefully it smooths out in the next couple months. I wish you guys the best. Any questions or any need, just DM me and uh, don't be a piece of shit. Have a nice day.